Welcome to Part 4 of the Charles Build. And welcome to my workshop and garden railway. I hope everyone will have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Since the last video I have continued with the cylinders. I am milling in the lathe using the vertical slide. Working on the second cylinder now, removing the bulk of material before the angle is generated. I have a 1 quarter inch slot drill in the 3 jaw chuck, running at about 1500 rpm. Each cut takes about a minute, and is about half a millimeter deep. The cutter is a bit blunt, that's quite a strange burr forming for brass. This vertical slide saves me from having a milling machine. Strangely, I don't want any more equipment. This machine vice has a swiveling upper jaw, but I had to remove it to be able to get the job in as it is too big otherwise. Here's the face after all the straight up and down cuts. There's a lot of swarf. The angle has been generated step by step. It took me a long time to realize why tilting my swiveling vertical slide over by the required 8 degrees would not result in the angle being generated. The answer is because the machine vice is still perpendicular to the axis of travel. Here's the two cylinders, with permanent marker marking the distinctive curves. The chamfer tool after drilling and chamfering the exhaust port. I have tapped the thread 1 quarter inch by 40 tpi, in the lathe to keep it square. You can see the port's markings on the top face, to make sure I get them on the correct side. Here is the drawing, showing the ports to be milled and drilled in the cylinder block. Ports milled. A plate will be soldered over these. The long slots feed the steam and exhaust to and from the cylinder edges. A slide valve will connect a single side with the central exhaust port. Drilling the steam port holes into the cylinder bore, using a 564 inch drill, or 2 mil. This is the same size as on my quarry Hunslet Loco. My swiveling vertical slide was very useful for these. Top and bottom. The next shipment from my friends, Little Metals, of Christchurch. Material for the steam chests, and port plates. I soon realized my error, no pieces for the steam chest covers. Oh well. Here are the steam chest blanks superglued to the faceplate for facing to thickness. I had already milled, three of the side faces. Slowly but surely they were faced off at 200 rpm. These are the two port face pieces. They were 1 8 inch, and needed facing down to 0.1 inch. I faced an equal amount off each side. Here are the cylinder components. One steam chest cavity has been marked out. I use permanent marker pen and my digital caliper for marking. Chain drilling 1 8 inch holes to remove the bulk of material before I use the 1 8 slot drill for milling. The slot drill was only long enough to go halfway through the job, so the job needed turning around to mill both sides. The long cuts are done, both sides, now I'm starting on the first end. One more side to do before the first steam chest cavity is finished. Finished. Lovely and shiny. Cutting out the central block on the second steam chest using the piercing saw and a 32 TPI blade. I decided to go with six stud holes in the steam chests rather than the four. There will be 32 pounds of force on the cover and block when at 40 psi. Here it is, marked out. Drilling the holes by coordinates, using the vertical slide and cross slide dials for positioning. The lathe is running at its top speed, 
over 2,100 rpm for this small drill. It is a deep hole 0.6 inch, or 15 and a 1 quarter mil. All six holes have been drilled, to 1.8 mm diameter, 8 BA tapping size, for drilling through into the cylinder block. Tapping the steam inlet hole 3 16 inch by 40 TPI. I am keeping to the same size as on the drawing. I don't need big steam pipes on a slow running model. I reverse the tapping now and again to clear the cut. But, with brass usually is not a problem, it is a matter of feel. I ran the tap a long way into the job as it is a taper tap, with a long tapered lead. There's been a change of plan. Those port face pieces are now going to be the steam chest covers. I need something a bit wider for the port faces. I have milled the sides to size. The cover has been positioned on the steam chest for drilling. I am using toolmaker's clamps to hold them together. Drilling through 1.8 mm diameter, using the steam chest as a drill jig. The cover holes were later drilled out to 2.2 mm, clearance for 8 BA. It is time for some adjustment in the cylinder positioning. I had the cylinders positioned too far back. This slot in the left side frame allows me to bring the cylinder forward so that the exhaust port lines up with the center of the smoke box. I will put a central hole between the two slots when the position is finalized to securely retain the cylinder. Here is the movement. The cylinder needs to come forwards. This is more or less the correct position for the cylinder. Drilling through the already drilled holes in the right side frame, into the right hand cylinder block, 2.5 mm diameter for M3 cap screws. Finish drilling to depth, about 10.5 mm for 12 mm long screws. Starting the M3 tapping using the bench drill to get the thread straight and square. I finish off by hand with a tap wrench. That's it, a nice square start. I have just milled the cylinder slots in the right hand frame. Fly cutting, using my old Emco Uni Mat 3 fly cutter. I needed to remove 0.4 mil from the cylinder edges to clear the smoke box width. Cylinders screwed to the frames, with the smoke box in place. Back on the shelf, the next job is to drill the cylinder blocks for the steam chests. Thank you for watching.